Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the turn bank coordinator. Specifically the strange thing called a standard rate turn and uh, how we can actually use that in order to calculate how much time it would take to make a turn. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, we're sitting here at lo lovely, lovely Orange County Regional. Uh, this is basically in the middle of Massachusetts. This is a fun airport for me in the real world because uh, this is a place where I had diverted to during a check ride. So it's always kind of fun to come here and be like, hee hee, this is where I got a license. But um, one of the things we're going to take a look at today is this guy called the tor Turn Coordinate. I can't talk, it's been a long week. So if you take a look at this instrument, uh, not only is it going to tell us which direction the aircraft is turning, it's also got this little thing on the bottom that says two minutes. You're probably saying, well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, let's get this thing in the air and then we'll take a look. Man, I miss flying a Cessna 172. It's such a straightforward airplane. It really just does what you want it to do and it's pretty good at that too. Easy to land also. So right now, while you're probably looking down on my turn coordinator, I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see it a little better. And you notice that it's basically just sort of chilling there. You also notice that as I'm kind of getting myself all kind of squared away with my trim, that it's staying pretty much in the center. You also probably notice that my attitude indicator is, you know, slightly towards the right there as we're cruising around. Now, if I execute a turn in this aircraft, let's go ahead and get a nice gentle bank turn here. It's about five or 10 degrees. You're going to see that that turn coordinator starts moving in the direction of the turn we're making. And you're also going to notice that my directional gyro is starting to kind of shift towards the left there. And you're probably seeing we're going pretty quick. So I'm actually going to tilt even further here. We'll bring us up to about 30 degrees. That should start running us out of lift here. That looks pretty good. And now you can observe that as my angle of bank increases, as my turn rate increases, that little line where that little miniature airplane goes also tips further and further to the right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start turning back towards the right here. Now a real turn coordinator will actually show you it start going the other direction. So that's actually not an accurate use of that in the real world. Interesting how that works out actually. But what you'll see is I'll go ahead and level off and you can see by the turn coordinator itself it's starting to come back to zero and you can also see over on the directional gyro that we're no longer indicating any sort of change in direction here we're still in that one to zero so now we're going to go ahead and pause for just a second here so we can take a closer look on that tool one of the things you probably observed in looking at that is these two lines right here as well as this thing at the bottom this is two minutes what this means is if this wingtip touches this line it will take us two minutes to execute a 360 degree left turn if the wingtip is on this one right here that means it'll take us two minutes to execute a 360 60 degree right turn. So just how accurate is that tool? Well, that's going to depend on the skill of the pilot itself. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come around to east here. I'll go ahead and unpause this real quick. Line up pretty nicely. I'm going to go grab up my stopwatch up in the top right corner. And we'll go ahead and select mode, select mode. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I'll probably switch it to this as flight time. There we go. Nice and east right now, so that's pretty solid. So what we're going to do is we're going to get us all nice and leveled off and everything like that. We'll come up to, well, we'll call about 1,800 feet here. Nothing too, too extreme. I just want to stay away from those uh, nasty mountains that are over in the eastern part of New York State there that you see off my nose. All right, that looks about 1,800 there. We'll go ahead and pull the throttle back to a nice relaxed cruise. And we're solid. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a right turn, and we're going to go ahead and keep this right wing tip right on this tool here. And we're going to go ahead and time what that appears before we get all the way around east again. So let's give it a try. Press the control key. Go ahead and tilt that aircraft. And I'm just going to go sit right here on this wing tip. Now, one of the interesting things uh, that I really appreciate about the turn coordinator that the attitude indicator does not do is it actually allows you to make turns at a constant rate independent of the speed of the aircraft. And actually, if you're traveling very, very slow, you don't have to train the plane very hard in order to get it to take a fairly aggressive turn. You'll see, for example, I'm doing about uh, 105, 108 knots, something like that. And I only have to manage uh, about 15, 20 degrees of bank here, and it's not too bad. Now, notice uh, we're about 30 seconds into my turn here, and I've got about, uh, let's see, about 30 seconds in, like I just said. And we're just starting to hit south here. Now, if you remember, our turn is supposed to take us two minutes to go all the way around. So theoretically, right when we get to that big letter W, we should be about, uh, let's call it about one minute into the turn. Now, keep in mind, I am not perfect at this. And all it takes is a one little modeling error somewhere along this to make it so it's not possible. But what you're probably going to observe is I'm about to hit the letter W, and at the exact same moment... 60 seconds just went by. So now I'm going to continue my turn here. And again, we're just going to keep it in here, not do any adjustments to anything. So I've traveled 180 degrees, and it's taken me exactly 60 seconds. So now we're going to go ahead and finish up this turn by coming all the way back to the east this time. And I'm going to show you one of the reasons why that instrument is so incredibly useful. Just kind of turn in, just kind of turn in. We've got about a minute and 20 there, so about 35 seconds to go. Oh, there's north right now. We should be hitting a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah, we're a little tiny bit early. Makes sense, though, because I just looked down at the instrument and I noticed that it was just slightly past the line. So let's go back that turn rate out just for a moment here. 
And let's go ahead and take that turn and get it right back in again. Now, people are instrument pilots. Uh, you are already master experts at this. Uh, this is uh, something you've done a million and one times. It is literally built into your flying consciousness. For the rest of us, we're going to go take a look at what I use this tool for in a normal plane. All right. And we're about to east again. I've got seven seconds to go. I'm right to overbanked just a tiny bit when I turned that one point. I would like to say you shouldn't be teaching and flying. And then we'll go ahead and level ourselves off. Two minutes. Ha, ha, ha. Not bad. Keep in mind, your gyro in the real world will process a little bit but it won't be as bad as I just did it right there. It's within legal, but um, it could be more precise. So now what is the real value of this tool? Well, for me, the big one is predicting when you need to turn from a particular point. Now, as you probably noticed, that turn indicator, like I said, would tell us that if we need 30 seconds at standard rate, that would mean that we complete a 90 degree turn. So why is that so helpful? Well, let's say I need to make a turn to the north. Um, if I know that I do a standard rate turn and it's going to take me 30 seconds to go to the north, if I have my GPS and my GPS says that I've got 30 seconds to go, if I start my turn, I will actually round the corner before I actually hit that particular point. So looking over my left wing right now, you'll probably see those uh, towers kind of just sort of hanging out there, just sort of relaxing on the mountain there. Let's say we use that as a turning point, and we want to be able to predict where we need to turn and how long it's going to take us to complete that turn. Since we know we're going to be turning straight to the north, which is going to be 30 seconds of turn, we can actually estimate by looking at the window when 30 seconds of turn is going to execute. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start my standard rate turn right now. Go ahead and uh, tip it right there. And I expect at about 30 seconds or so, the aircraft should be just about hitting that one tower, and we should be doing just about north now. Looking pretty good so far. And a little bit more bank. You can see I'm just starting to cruise over the top of that now. We'll Losing a little bit of altitude. Keep that standard rate in there. And I'm just going over the top of it. And it looks like my estimation was just a tiny bit, about 10 or 15 degrees shy, which is not bad at all. But you noticed, it took us exactly 30 seconds. We went over the top of that tower, and now I have myself a nice, reliable amount of turn that I have just executed. There's another advantage to that tool, too, and that's what happens when your directional gyro is busted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause real fast. I'm going to float on down here. Now, one of the cool things you have here is you can actually intentionally damage this instrument. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, wreck it. I'm going to put it over here. Now, normally what you do is you'd shut the vacuum pump off to simulate this, but uh, we're not going to go into the flight sim controls and actually dial it in. That's going to be a little bit too much work for us today. Now, let's say we have only our compass to navigate. So right now I can see on my compass that I'm facing north. Let's say they give us an instruction that says we need to turn 30 degrees. Uh, we're going to go on a heading of 3-0. Now, normally we just start my turn and look down here and identify when that is. Now, some people are like, well, we can just, it's, it's a compass. You can just uh, drive on the compass. Well, look what happens when I tip. <laughs> As you can see, this compass is not a very useful instrument for determining turns. As a matter of fact, it is uh, tipped in. It's all sorts of nasty and uh, completely out of whack there. So it's not going to do us very much good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll pull this back out. But like I said, since we know how long it takes us to do a turn, we can now execute a standard rate turn to come out on the correct heading, independent of our broken little directional gyro, which unfortunately just hit the reset button because of force of habit. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So we need to take a 30 degree right turn. Since 30 degree is uh, one third of the way to 90 degrees, and 90 degrees takes 90, 30 seconds, we simply do the division. So if we did 30, we divide it by three, that's gonna get us about 10 seconds. So if I execute a 10 second right turn at standard rate, that should theoretically put us on a three zero heading. So let's do it. And I'm looking at my little clock there on the right, and I'm gonna start right when it says 15. 15, all right, so we'll go ahead and execute our right turn. And we're just looking at the clock there. We're going to stop turning when it says 25. Ignore the directional gyro being accurate. And that's 25 seconds. I'm going to go on to the turn. All right, let's see how we did. I'll go ahead and let everything uh, restabilize here. Give myself a couple taps of trim. If I come over here, you'll probably observe the fact that I'm just so slightly over. And if you look, of course, at my original directional gyro, you can see that I'm also slightly over. Uh, one of the downsides to that is you're at the mercy of how fast you turn in. Now, if we were to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and come back to 30 degrees here real quick, and we'll go ahead and undo it. And this time, we'll execute a slower turn in. There we go. We'll pop it right about there. We'll get started right when it says six minutes. Again, we're going to take a left turn and just go ahead and count up 10 at standard rate. And left turn. We'll go ahead and do it a little bit more calm this time. There we go. And we're just watching the clock. Six, eight, nine, ten. We'll come out of the turn. And as you can see, we are now facing, oh, let's see what our little guy says right here. Perfect. So you can see that in the event that I lost my directional gyro, I can still take reliable turns as long as I have that turn coordinator information. Enjoy.